Welcome back to Biosignaling on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss a, a type of biosignaling pathway that's sometimes kind of neglected in some biochemistry courses, but I still think it's very important, and that's the Janus kinase. Now, this pathway is often abbreviated to the JAK-STAT pathway. The JAK stands for Janus kinase. And the STAT is just a protein that becomes activated when the JAK becomes activated. And typically the JAK-STAT system is reserved mostly for um, immunological functions. Um, a lot of uh, cytokines are actually going to signal through a JAK-STAT pathway. Um, but we see here EPO or erythropoietin. Uh, this actually signals through the JAK-STAT pathway as well. All right, so let's talk about how the JAK-STAT pathway works. So first we're going to talk about the Janus kinases, the JAKs. These are these proteins that are in the membrane, like you see here, they're purple. Um, you'll notice that the Janus kinase, at least the start of it, is very similar to uh, the receptor tyrosine kinases. And the reason for that is because the Janus kinases also autophosphorylate. Meaning, whenever you have your signaling molecules, such as EPO here, erythropoietin, whenever it binds to this JAK receptor, the EPO receptor, it causes them to homodimerize. And in the same way, we have a Janus kinase, which is going to autophosphorylate the partner JAK. Okay, so the Janus kinase on the left is going to phosphorylate the right protein. The right Janus kinase is going to phosphorylate the left protein. And you see here three additional phosphates on each of these um, individual units of the EPO receptor. Now, these phosphates, again, just like in the case of the RTK, are sticky and they stick onto different proteins. Okay? On one side, we can actually have a MAP kinase cascade in the exact same way we saw for the insulin receptor, the RTK. We have a protein here called SHC, which activates GRB2, and we get the mitogen activating protein kinase cascade, or MAP kinase cascade. That's exactly what we saw here. We have GRB2, and we get the entire cascade, which is called a MAP kinase cascade. I don't know if I mentioned that before. That's one thing that this Janus kinase can do. And again, with the MAP kinase cascade, we affect gene expression. But the other thing is actually where we get the name the JAK-STAT pathway, because these phosphates that are on the, on the JAKs activate a protein called STAT. And depending on what cell you're talking about, there's different STAT proteins. We've got STAT1, STAT2, STAT3, STAT4, STAT5. This is just showing generally what happens. But understand that depending on the cell that you're talking about, they'll express only a certain type of STAT or one or two STAT proteins. But in any case, this STAT becomes, it binds to the JAK, and it gets phosphorylated, because the JAK is a kinase, so it can phosphorylate STAT. Whenever STAT becomes phosphorylated, it actually uh, dimerizes. And it dimerizes in this way, which is kind of cool. So this SH2 domain is good at binding phosphates, and so this SH2 domain is going to bind the phosphate of another STAT. And so you can see they kind of fit together like this. The stat on the right, its phosphate is bound by the SH2 domain of the stat on the left, and the phosphate of the stat on the left is bound by the SH2 domain of the stat on the right. Okay, um, so hopefully that uh, gives you some intuition on, on how they work, but they have to dimerize here in the cytosol. Now, over here you see this little bump right here. This is only exposed when they dimerize. Notice here in the monomer, I don't have that little bump anywhere. But when they dimerize, you have this thing that's exposed right here, which is the NLS. Anytime you see the term NLS, that stands for nuclear localization sequence. And what the NLS does is it actually is able to, through a series of complicated processes that we talk about in another video, it guides the protein into the nucleus. Because remember, things don't aren't just free to go in and out of the nucleus. It's tightly regulated. And so you have to have a nuclear localization sequence to be able to get into the nucleus. But in any case, once the stats dimerize, they go into the nucleus and affect gene expression, most likely by upregulating certain genes, although they can also repress others. All right, so in the case of erythropoietin, most likely these stats are going to upregulate genes involved in uh, polycythemia, you know, increased uh, hematocrit synthesis of red blood cells and all that stuff, okay, since that's what erythropoietin's function is, okay? So, 
Hopefully the Janus kinases or JAK stat pathway makes some sense to you. Um, you should think about its similarity and actually some uh, crosstalk with the receptor tyrosine kinases. All right, so hopefully you understand it. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.